This is a Fujifilm X-T100 black body with a silver lens. I don't know. Yeah, they gave me a silver lens, but doesn't matter. This is an entry-level SLR style Fujifilm camera. Now, I was going to skip this because this is an entry-level camera. I find it pretty boring. I mentioned in my channel with Kai, in the full bro, we mentioned that we think this looks boring. Well, it's not bad, but compared to other Fujifilm cameras, this looks a bit boring. But something caught my attention and I have to check this out by myself. Now, as I mentioned, this is an entry-level Fujifilm camera, but it's not entry-level rangefinder. That's why it's not called X-A or something like that. So the spec is similar to X-A5, 24 megapixel, 91 phase detection air points. Actually, these days, well, you can't really see the air points here, but these days, even entry-level cameras got like 91 phase detection points. 6 FPS first, really normal for entry-level. So as I mentioned, it looks like a film SLR camera, like metal bit on top and the bottom, and then this fake leather bit at the center. It's too obvious Fujifilm trying to make this look exactly like a film camera. Especially from the front, you can almost be sticking those dials as shutter speed dial, film widening dial, and rewinding dial. But I'm not, I'm not really sure if it's actually metal. It feels, it feels plastic. Yeah, I think it's plastic actually. Apparently, the top plate is metal, but it just feels flimsy. Well, this SLR shape, it do hide the uh, EVF. On the top, you got this bow dial. Now for entry-level camera, it actually caught quite a lot of dials. One here, one here, and this big one that pretend to be a film SLR rewind dial. Three dials, that's good, but I would love to have one in front. Too bad you can't really customize to these two buttons. You can customize this to a lot of things. Self-timer, image quality, image, film simulation, white balance, or photo me metric default you can change film simulation from this style i don't know what, how frequent you will change that so i set it to iso i have to say though these style on top are great very satisfying clicks this remote control port and actually you can use external mic on here i will go back to this later something remind you this is an entry level camera is that these buttons are i mean these buttons it's already feel loose before you touching it. I mean, before you press it. And then it's not really click click button. It just feel cheap. And then when you access the menu, there's quite a lot of lag before it register your click. Got quite a bit of lag even when you are trying to change settings. But after all, this is an entry level camera. So it's not like it's something wrong with this. But being an entry-level this day, it still takes good photos. I mean, all cameras are good these days. Again, for entry-level camera, this is not bad to grip. A lot of entry-level camera really awkward to grip. Um, this is this doesn't have a big grip like a flagship camera, but I do love the thumb rest at the back. It makes it gripping it so much more secure. And also, it do comes with an additional whip thing at the side. So usually, you have to pay extra and not cheap for those. This comes with it, so that's pretty good. This is a scene that haven't been changed since the 70s and more importantly haven't changed since I was small. Exactly the same wheel. That's the high court, which is getting useless these days because Beijing can just overrule everything. Now the AF speed is a bit mm, not that not that quick. So Despite it got 91 AF points, it has a lot of AF points, doesn't mean it focuses quick. I guess it's just the processor is a bit slow. I mean, as I mentioned, when you access the menu, it's a bit laggy. So I think it reflects on the AF speed as well. Well, usable, 
totally usable. It's miles better than my Olympus EP1 and I have been using that for like decades. Well, not really decades. Now this kit lens is rather interesting. It is that kind of retrap and extend automatically when you turn it on that kind of kit lens. This is a 15 to 45 millimeters f3.5 to 5.6. What's interesting is that these two rings, one of them is uh, this one you can't turn, you can't turn around. It's like a flick switch. And the ring in front, you zoom in, it try to replicate a manual zoom feeling, kind of. To be honest, not bad because it's so light to use you can just flick it with your ring finger. But I have to say, I have seen better kit lens and smaller than this comparable zoom range and app stop. One thing annoys me though is that I have to set my, if I'm on S mode, I have to set my shutter speed with this little dial here, and then it quite easily accidentally lock. Lock me, lock the position. Uh. Oh, sorry, I did forgot to mention this is a touch screen. You can have it to set your focusing area, or turn it off, or autofocus, or touch to take a shot. Now, the important bit. As I mentioned, I was going to skip this camera because it's an entry level camera. I'm not really excited about it. But something excited me, something caught my attention is this flip screen. I mean, it's of course, this is not the first camera with a flip screen. What's so special about it? The special about it is that this is a hybrid flip and two screen. Can you see the significant invention of this screen? Because I've been using the Sony camera, it only have a two screen. So it don't flip to the front to shoot vlogging. Of course, a lot of people want a flip screen so that you can see yourself when you do vlogging. The Sony camera don't have it, but the good thing about a tilt screen is that I can quickly just flip it out. Tilt it, tilt it, not flip. I find this out when I was at New Zealand trip, I, when I was using a GH5, I can't quickly tilt it up like that. I have to flip out and then turn. It, it, it's just a little bit annoying. It's the first time this have best of both worlds. And as I mentioned, you can use an external mic on this camera this remote jack is uh, actually a 2.5 mm mic jack as well. So, potentially, you can kit this out and become a pretty good vlogging camera. Potentially. Is it really good enough? I just hope that nobody make any tripod, pocket tripod, that you have to tighten it with a coin. Annoying. So, look at that. A full flocking setup, okay. Bowling. It crop in a little bit, it's not using the whole sensor. But the thing is, this shoot 4K, but you can forget about it because it's shoot 4K 15 FPS. That's not useful unless you're doing animation, stop motion, something like that. Which you don't really need motion movie mode. Funny though, when it's shooting 1080, you can only shoot at 50 or 60p, not 25 or 30p. 22 millimeters equivalence, good enough for vlogging. Now we are looking at the lens OIS, the kit lens OIS, because there's no in body stabilization. But there is a digital stabilization which is off right now. Now this is Subway Underground Metro MTR low light test. Not really extremely low light, of course, but real life situation, low light. But actually, Hong Kong MTR is still pretty bright. <laughs> but this is that kind of low light most people would experience. Indoor, artificial light. Low light quality is not bad. Still having face detection point doesn't help with autofocus. What really disappoints me, the autofocus in video is really unreliable. It simply randomly go out of focus. And what's really odd is the exposure. I was using S mode. The exposure simply changed overly sensitive. It's just jumping around. 
It's a shame it don't have the new eternal film simulation from those XX1. That is a really good film simulation. Almost like those Sony picture profile, those Cine like Cine 2, Cine 4 picture profile give you much better dynamic range. Overall, it's a good steel camera, especially as an entry level camera. It can give you good quality pictures. Video shooting is a big miss without reliable AF and exposure control. Especially this is similar price as the Canon M50. But I'm still excited about the X-T100. Not because of the amazing video capability, but as a sneak peek of what's coming in the next Fujifilm flagship camera with that new flip and two screen design.